Welcome to Oxford School Guide Life. I'm your host, Jackie Hermans. So the weather has been changing. I usually have a little bit of a tough time during this time of year. Let's set, letting go of summer, right? Letting go of that gorgeous weather and, and being okay for the cooler weather. And it has been really nice. I know we've had some rainy days and everything, but it is harvest time, everybody. We've had the fall equinox, it's harvest time. Now, today will be a great show. We'll be talking about the Abilities Center. Also, there's a pretty cool announcement that uh, we're going to be talking about, about uh, a partnership between Rogers TV and, you're gonna have to watch to find out, and we're also gonna talk to Olympian Matthew Hughes, who is a steeple chaser yeah he he can jump high i would need air jordans and a heck of a lot more confidence to be able to try to jump like he does well more than confidence skill as well i think that would be very important but we're going to talk about matthew's experience uh with the olympics so all that and more on oxford school god life we'll be right back This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. The Canadian film and TV industry recognizes it's time to build a better workforce, which includes more opportunities for black, indigenous, and persons of color. HireBIPOC.com is here to help make this happen. Whether you're already in the business, trying to get a start, or in a position to hire, HireBIPOC.com could connect you to the right people. From script to development, production to post, distribution to marketing. Check out HireBIPOC.com now and help build a stronger industry together. Hey, I'm Chef Corey Dern, host of a show on Rogers TV Georgina called Cooking with Corey. Join me bi-weekly for brand new episodes this season where I teach you not only what to cook, but how to cook. Don't miss these tasty and fun episodes. That's Cooking with Corey right here on Rogers TV Georgina. Welcome back to Oxford Scugog Life. So this is pretty exciting. I have Jim Anderson with us as well as Dan Pollard. From 105.5 Hits FM, how are you guys doing? I'm good, and Jim's your boss. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why it's so cool. When do I get to interview my boss? This uh, is so great. Have no worries. <laughs> I love this. Okay, so we're talking about some really exciting news. We have a partnership going on between Rogers TV and 105.5 Hits FM. So, Jim, I understand that you contacted Ed Torres about this potential partnership. Can you tell me, like, how did that thought process happen in the first place? And uh, when did you contact Ed? Yeah, I think, um, well, this is going back a couple of years now before um, before the station in Keswick was born. Um, I'd met with Dan and with Ed, and, and we just kind of figured, you know what, it, why work against each other when we can probably help each other out? And that's always been kind of my policy that, you know, there's room for both of us in town, and um, let's, let's see if there's something we can do to help each other out. So I, I think what the partnership between us at Rogers TV has been, um has, has has started off and it's been it's been great um to let the viewers know basically on rogers tv we have a community message board that runs uh overnight and during the day a couple of hours and uh i mean i sh i shouldn't say i'm proud of this but we had some awful elevator music playing during that message board during the day and uh unless you really wanted to read those those PSAs, uh, there's probably, you know, the music wasn't going to keep you there. So <laughs> what I thought about was, could we partner with local radio stations, both in Uxbridge, Skugog, and in Georgina, um, and have the radio station playing, uh, which would give people uh, another reason to stick and watch and to listen to the radio station. And uh, in, in return, could we get some ad for some of our TV shows on the radio station? So it really has been a partnership both in Uxbridge School Gog with Hits FM and with K Country and Georgina. And uh, I'll pass to Dan, but it, on our end, it's worked out great. 
That is absolutely beautiful. And just before, Dan, we pass it to you, I just want to say that I love that you said we might as well work together. There's enough room for both of us here. And, you know, everyone who wants, who is in business or wants to start their own business, there is room for all of us. And the more that we that we work together, create those par partnerships, the more abundance that we are going to have within our communities. Yeah, I think okay, both so those both stations are community minded. We're, we're here for the community and to, you know, promote, promote local. So uh, let's do it. Let's do it together. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Okay, and that's Dave. the big thing, Jackie, with us was, um, I mean, when we started the station in Uxbridge was to involve the community and it's been a learning process. It's the station uh, will actually, I think it's this week is six years, been here six years, but it's actually, you know, letting the community know we're here for the community. And uh, it, and I've worked at Rogers Cable before when I was in college years ago. So I know the, the, the strength and the reach that community television has. And that's the key word for us was community. And it's like, well, why wouldn't we? Uh, there wasn't even a question. It wasn't opposition or you're doing this, we're doing this. We're, I mean, we do have advertisers where it's sponsors at, uh, at Rogers. And so we're not competing for, you know, sponsors or anything like that. But what we are doing is building the community. And again, that's that word that's very key to us in, uh, in its community and getting the words out and the messages out for a lot of people who don't have the opportunities. If it was big television or big radio, they can't afford advertising or anything like that. This gives them a platform to get their messages out. Hi. So, oh, we got some feedback happening. Can you hear that feedback? <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe it's gone. I just want to say I am so incredibly grateful because I'm involved with your community auction. And this is giving me an opportunity. I'm a small business. I'm just, you know, getting my, my yoga classes online. I need to make sure people know that I, that I, I'm there and, uh, you know, if, if they're interested in yoga, they can come. And, and now I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the cool thing is you're connected and we're connected. So yeah. everybody's connected. Yeah. I'm so incredibly grateful. And I'm also, I think it's so cool that we actually have uh, a Rogers TV station in Utica now. So Jim, do you want to talk about that station? Yeah, I mean, it was it was it's the old Compton Cable building, and and Rogers took that over a few years ago. And yes, when I first went to go look for it, I almost drove by it because I couldn't find it in the out in the middle of uh, out in Utica. Um, however, I think the community needs to know that we have a working studio there. Uh, producer Doug Boyd uh, works out of that station, and we are creating new programming for the community, uh, including your show, which is fantastic, yeah. by the way. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, I just the community needs to know we are here for them if they have businesses to promote or events to promote. You know, now that events are starting to happen again, it's you know it's tough to launch a new show, Jackie. I'm sure you can say, in a pandemic when there's not a whole lot going on. But I I am very confident that that's going to pick up very shortly, and uh, and we'll bring more guests to the show. Beautiful. Yeah, it's just about getting the word out there and we're working together to make that happen. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for being on the show today. It was wonderful to have you. We will be right back with more on Oxford School God Life. Her name is Phyllis Webstead, and she is a survivor from a dark period in Canadian history. Beginning in the 1830s, Indigenous children were taken from their families. They were sent away to residential schools and forced to abandon their traditions, languages, and culture. Phyllis remembers her first day at St. Joseph's Mission Residential School. The year was 1973. She was six years old, and she was wearing a new orange shirt, which was purchased by her grandmother. Arriving at the school, she was stripped of her clothes. She never wore that shirt again. To quote Phyllis, my feelings didn't matter. No one cared, and I felt like I was worth nothing. The last residential school closed in 1996. Phyllis will never forget, nor should we. In 2013, Phyllis started the nationally commemorated Orange Shirt Day. On September 30th, wear something orange.
Welcome back to Oxford Scugog Life. With me now on the show is Pinder Da Silva, who is the senior, I want to make sure I get this right, senior director of programs and services at the Ability Center, yes. which is located at Iroquois Park, correct? In Whitby? It's connected to Iroquois Park. Yes, we're located in Whitby. Yes. Okay, beautiful. Thank you so much for being on the show, Pinder. I, the, I have to tell you, um, maybe my head has been in the sand because it's been recently that I actually found out about the Ability Center. And I understand that you engage more than 100,000 people living with and without dis uh, disabilities through programs and services. Pinder, can you tell me what types of programs and services do you have available at the center? We actually have uh, quite a few programs and services. So as a not-for-profit, we really do focus on you know, developing programs that harness the power of accessibility and, and inclusion. And so we have programs that are, you know, in the area of education, in life skills, in employment, in sport, in recreation and leisure, and of course, research, because every single one of our programs really looks at how are we impacting individuals, families, organizations, and of course, our overall community um, uh, in terms of accessibility and, and inclusion. So what does your facility look like? What, um, what type of areas do you have available for, for individuals, for, for major athletes? We are, our facility is actually a 125,000 square foot fully accessible facility. We have an extremely large atrium when you first enter with a um, very accessible ramp that takes you to the second floor. We have three full, you know, we have three basketball courts, we have a track, we have rooms that are available upstairs that where most of our, um, especially our life skills and our, our uh, skills development uh, programming takes place. So we have a lounge with a kitchen, we have a life skills apartment, we have a theater. Uh, so we have a very large facility that is used for all of our different types of programs. And I understand you have partnerships internationally. Do you want to just quickly, briefly tell us about that? Yeah, we do. We have a number of partnerships for, for majority of our programs. We have lots of partnerships that are related specifically to research across different academia, you know, universities and colleges across uh, the province and, and, and the world. And then we have a number of partnerships that actually are located in the UK. Uh, you know, International Mixed Ability Sport, IMAS, is one of our key partners. And we really work with them to uh, to have launched Mixed Ability Sport in Canada. So we're the... We, uh, we have the sole um, right to uh, mixed ability sport out here in Canada. And then Activity Alliance is actually another one of our key partners also located in the, in the UK. And we are uh, delivering a program called LEAD, which is Leading Equitable and Accessible Delivery, where we work with government, with municipalities, uh, businesses, organizations, to embed accessibility and inclusion into every core and fabric of their organization. So everything from their marketing to their leadership, to their structure, to their governance, it's really about strategically embedding accessibility and inclusion into who they are and how they serve their communities that they're in. So those are two of our key partners out in the UK. Beautiful. Thank you, Pinder. Now, I understand your facility is open for the public to use and something very exciting. You have an anniversary coming up and some really? anniversary events. Do you want to briefly tell us about those events coming up? So we actually have two events coming up very shortly, and then our 10th anniversary is next year. So one of the events, I know that by the time this airs, this event will have already happened, but we have our first ever mixed ability rugby tournament that's called All In Rugby Cup coming up this Sunday, so September 26th at Thompson Park in Oshawa, starting at 10 a.m. And we will have clubs from London, Burlington, Oshawa, and Toronto. And mixed ability sport is really about using inclusion components to maximize participation for individuals by, by welcoming players of all ages, all abilities, all backgrounds into mainstream support uh, sports settings. 
And then the other event that we've got coming up is our Festival, Festival of Trees on November 6th. So it'll be our first uh, in-person event since COVID. So we're just hoping to re-engage our, our members and our community. We're looking to do a little bit of fundraising and support our programs and services, hoping to get about $50,000. So we'll have beautifully decorated trees to raffle off. Uh, raffle off. We'll have shopping, movies in our theater, uh, Polar Express, and then next year, as we said, is our 10th anniversary. So we are in the planning stages of that for, for all the events where we will be hosting about three smaller community events and then a larger signature event to celebrate our, our 10 years. So we are still in, in the planning stages of that piece. Beautiful. Very exciting. So if anyone wants to come to the Ability Centre, do they need to book ahead, schedule a time to use the facility? How does that work right now? So you do have to be, if you want to use the facility, like the gym portion of the facility, you do, you are required to have a membership. And as a member of the facility, we're actually officially as of Friday, there will be no pre-registration required to come in and use any of the equipment, to use the track, to, to use our, our weights and workout rooms. We're still requesting pre-registration for some of our classes. All of our other programs and services are, are usually pre, they're pre-registration. So you can certainly go onto our website and learn about all of our programs and which ones require pre-registration and which ones you can just drop in to use. Okay, that's beautiful. If, um, if you can put it into one sentence, why you think the Ability Center is a phenomenal place to, to work, to play, um, to experience, what would you say? Wow, okay. so. Hmm, that's a tough I'm one. Sorry, I'm like, I like threw that out. I know, I know. that's really tough. <laughs> like, so you know, we're we're uh, we're such an amazing facility. We and it goes beyond the facility. So, because you know, we always say at the end, this is gonna be more than a sentence. So obviously you're gonna have to get <laughs> stuff out. Um, at the we always say at the end of the day, our facility, despite how beautiful it is, it's 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 you know, once lights are off, it's just a building, right? It's really what takes place inside the building and the staff that we have and the amazing participants and the amazing programs that and, and the culture of, of our organization that makes it who we are and how we collaborate outside of the center with our partners that truly represents our the core of our culture and, and our mission and our vision. So Beautiful. I think that's what I would say. Thank you. You said that. That was beautiful. Good. Thank you so Good. much, Pinder. This was Pinder De Silva from Ability Center. We'll be right back with more on Oxbridge School God Life. Thanks, Thank you. Pinder. Are you a woman experiencing abuse? Do you know a woman experiencing abuse? Help is available any time of day or night. Sheltersafe.ca is an online map that helps you find a women's shelter or transition house that meets your needs so you can live a life free from violence. Sheltersafe.ca. Help is just a click away. Hi, I'm Melinda with Move with Melinda. I am so excited to bring to you a six part fitness series called Motion is the Potion. We're gonna be working on three key ingredients, cardiorespiratory training, strength training, and flexibility. These three things are gonna get you fitter, stronger, and feeling happier. I'll be there, will you? Welcome back to Oxford Scugog Life. I am so excited to have the opportunity to interview Matthew Hughes or Matt Hughes, who had an opportunity to go to the Olympics for the second time. So his first appearance was in, in Rio, and then he made it to Tokyo. Uh, Matt, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. It is so great to have you on here. So Matt, you run the, ch the steeplechase. And I understand you can jump hurdles higher than kitchen tables. I can't, I will not even attempt to jump on my kitchen chair and you're, you're going over hurdles bigger than my table. That is impressive. Yeah. I gotta tell you. 
Uh, thank you very much. So I understand that uh, you had an incredible performance in Tokyo, best of any Canadian ever in the, the 3,000 men's steeplechase. And uh, I, tell us about it. What was your experience there? What happened? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, for me, it was a it was a good performance. But um, yeah, with with COVID and everything, every I feel like we've all had to uh, deal with a lot of adversity this last you know year to almost two years now. Um, but yeah, it was um, like I, I like to tell people there was like even with COVID, there was still you know there's still three medals on the line in every single event, and people were still going to there to compete. So you still had to get ready as best as you can. And yeah, so I think um, I think I did a, very, uh, a a job that I was proud of at the end of the day, and I was just happy to represent my country and uh, do the best I can and make you know my friends and family proud. Now, I understand that you contracted COVID about seven months before the Games. How did that affect your performance? How did that affect your health? What went on for you there? Yeah, so um, specifically for most Canadian endurance runners and even track and field uh, runners in general, most uh, in most places in the country, we we try to get out of Canada for the, the winter just because it's so hard to train. And because of COVID, um, you know, all most of the indoor facilities were closed in Canada. And um, yeah, track, track, like most Olympic sports weren't getting any preferential treatment at all. So um, it was kind of a no brainer that we had to, well, me specifically, I had to go down to the States to train because I, I just couldn't get the training in that I needed to um, in specifically in Toronto in January and February. So I decided to leave and go to Arizona and do some training in the winter. Um, and yeah, within the first week of being down there, I, uh, I got, you know, sick and it obviously turned out to be COVID. Um, and, you know, for the most part, I thought I would, you know, you'd be very safe, but you know, it's hard to know where it came from and where I got it. But, um, I isolated myself pretty quickly um, and, yeah, couldn't train or do anything for essentially three weeks of being down there, which kind of sucked because obviously you're paying your way to be down there and you can't really do much while you're down there. Um, but, yeah, for me, like personally, I was I only felt symptoms for about 12 to 24 hours and then I got over it pretty quickly. But the two doctors that I was consulting with um, both told me to, like, be very, very cautious. So I didn't do any exercise for I think 10 to 12 days. And then by the time I got around to like working out fully again, it was probably almost three weeks. Um, but I found because I was probably very cautious and uh, played it slow, I bounced back pretty quickly. Um, yeah, and I just kind of got the ball rolling on the rest of the season and uh, ended up, um, yeah, obviously performing really well um, at the Olympics. So it all worked out in the end. So you played six in the Olympics, correct? Yep. Uh, that's fabulous. Now, I understand after Rio, you had what people call an after Olympics hangover and you lost your joy for running. Has that happened again since Tokyo? How are you feeling right now? Yeah, no, I'm feeling good. You know, I think for for most Olympic athletes and most Olympic sports that aren't, you know, considered major sports um you know for us our big stage is obviously every four years so you spend your your life really I think you know me specifically most people only see you know the eight minutes that I'm on the track racing but it's you know it's years and years of preparation um that go into you know making a, an Olympic performance or dream happen so um for me personally Rio didn't go particularly well and I think most athletes and myself included I think you kind of build up what the Olympics is in your mind and um, uh, for many different reasons I don't think Rio really lived up to, to what I had it built in my mind I think both performance wise um, I I got a little injured going into it so I didn't quite have the performance that I was hoping to have and then plus um, if I'm being like brutally honest I don't think Rio and more specifically, the country of Brazil was quite ready to handle an Olympics. I think it's tough for a country that's, you know, I'm not calling Brazil a third world country, but they have a lot of issues that they need to figure out before they, 
can host a world event like that. Um, and I just don't think they did a, a great job. I think they they put the Olympic Stadium in the wrong spot. No, like, you know, fan, fan, like local fans couldn't even afford tickets to go. Um, and I think the, the country was, and the city of Rio was promised a lot of things by the Olympic Committee that they never ended up having. And I mean, that's a, that's a story for another day, but yeah, I think, you know, going back to your original question with the hangover, and I think, yeah, as an athlete, you build it up in your mind that it's going to be this grand thing and it doesn't live up to it. And, and then you spend your life building to this moment and then the moment passes you by and then you're just kind of like, well, what next kind of thing. And um, if I'm comparing, you know, Tokyo to Rio, you know, I'm five years older and you kind of a little bit more wiser and you know what to expect and and, um, you know, personally, the performance in Tokyo was a lot better. So I kind of can look fondly back on it and know that, you know, I gave everything I, I, I could and I had a great performance and something I can look back and be proud on. So beautiful, Matthew, it has been such a pleasure to uh, to talk you, with you today. And I look forward to hearing more about uh, your adventures moving forward. Thank you so much for joining us. We will be right back with more on Oxford Scugog Life. I started playing softball when I was four years old. I loved it because it was all about having fun with my friends. And it still is. From little kids to adults to seniors, softball is a sport for everyone. Join us. Hi, I'm Jennifer. And I'm Allison. Coming up on this next episode of The Parenting Show, we're talking about helping kids with friendship issues. Maybe you like their friends, maybe you don't. We're going to cover a bunch of topics. That's right here on Rogers TV. Hello, I'm Jonathan Van Bilsen. My next guest will be Rosario Greco, a hairstylist and trained trichologist from Port Perry with an exceptional talent for restoring hair for people with medical conditions. Please join us right here on Rogers TV. Scugog Life. So that is a wrap. And that was a fun show. I wish I had more time with Matt Hughes. I would have asked him about what his training is like, what kind of nutrients he eats all the time. I'm, I'm all about fitness. So I would have been super stoked to be able to find out that information. And maybe we just need to have him back on the show. So do you want to be on the show? If you want to be on the show, why don't you send us an email? Uxbridge Scugog Life at rci.rogers.com. And maybe you know someone else who has a program, a product, a service, something cool to educate the community about. Give them a nudge. Say, send them an email. Oxford Scugog Life at rci.rogers.com. Let's make it happen. This show is your show. So provide us with the, the beautiful info so we can provide it to the community. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next week with more in Oxford Scoopback Life. Bye. Call the Rogers TV viewer response line, email us or connect with us on social media. Treaty in Cree is Naskumitoin, an oral agreement. And our agreements were always spoken. For George Spence, the core of treaty was Wichihioin, to help one another. And so we, the commissioners. He was there for the making of Treaty 9, where the Cree were told. We will honor this agreement together for as long as the sun shines and the waters flow. The Cree made their mark because they were assured that the land would be shared and they would always be able to harvest 